What's up family, it's Indigo Bruno back at you with another video. Today we're going to be going into the conspiracy about our health and how there's a lot of stuff that's affecting us negatively that a lot of people are just not aware of. From things like exposing the food industry with things like fluoride, glyphosate, heavy metals, and things about our gut health. Now just warning you, this video is going to be pretty crazy. I literally went so deep down the rabbit hole trying to expose all the deep loose ends of the food industry that basically show that there's a lot of toxic shit that's affecting us and a lot of people are just not aware of it. Now I'm aware that this topic can be kind of on the negative end and you know there's a lot of stuff that you kind of don't want to know about but it's good to know about and either way I just want you to know that I recently stopped resonating with the victim mindset so all this stuff is just purely informational and it's stuff to make you more aware of the shit you're eating that's going into your body just to help you not consume that stuff and move on to better things. But this is not something to promote the victim mindset way of thinking. I don't want anyone to think that I'm kind of saying that the government is just shitting on us all the time. It's just a video to help make you more aware of the stuff you're eating and drinking and how all that stuff is affecting your health. And it's all just for you to decide what you want to do about it. But keep in mind that as we say in spirituality, the mind is very powerful and it's really mind over matter. So whatever you think may happen and whatever you really think is going on in your reality, you start attracting it more. So don't take this so deeply that you think everything you eat is going to be just fucking up your body in every single way because you're going to start manifesting that reality for you. It's just for you to be aware of the things that are bad so you avoid them, but it's not for you to think that every little thing is just going to fuck you up because that's not a good way to live. At the end of the video, I'll also mention a solution that can basically help with everything that's mentioned in the video. And you'll learn about it more soon, but just keep that in mind. Okay, I'm starting this video with probably the biggest conspiracy and the most shocking thing I learned about while doing all of this research. Okay, don't be scared, but just look at this for a moment. The following graphs are correlations between the percentage of glyphosate and GMO corn and soy and the rise of various diseases across the US. From obesity, to diabetes, to kidney disease, to Parkinson's, to dementia, to autism, and even cancer. So now you're probably thinking, what the hell is glyphosate? Well, let me tell you. So glyphosate is basically the active ingredient in the herbicide or weed killer called Roundup, which was created by the chemical company called Monsanto. Now keep in mind, this is the same company that created Agent Orange, which was a powerful herbicide used by the US in the Vietnam War that had a lot of negative effects on both the US and Vietnamese troops, which Monsanto basically said was safe to handle, but later we found out that all the troops basically developed things from cancer, to birth defects, to neurological and psychological problems. Just food for thought so you know the type of organization that we're dealing with. So Roundup started to be used in 1974 and it is actually now the most widely used herbicide in human history. More than 200 million pounds of glyphosate are applied on US farm fields annually. And around 9.5 million tons are sprayed on fields worldwide. Now Roundup is applied to more than 100 US food crops as well as lawns, golf courses, and schoolyards. Now as I said, Roundup is basically just a herbicide or a weed killer, which means it's sprayed directly over things to kill the weeds around them. Now some of these things include GMO crops which are actually engineered to resist this herbicide. The only problem is that after continued use, the weeds also become resistant to this herbicide, which means that the farmers actually have to spray more on the weeds every time, which also means that you have more herbicide in your food, especially if you eat GMOs. Roundup is also sprayed over non-GMOs such as wheat and oats to basically dry them out before harvest in a process called desiccation. Many farmers such as spinach and almond growers also use it on their fields before harvest. Now because GMO foods are sprayed directly with this herbicide, a lot of them have high amounts of glyphosate. And surprisingly, organic foods that are not sprayed with the herbicide actually have a lot less but still not 0%. As some organic crop fields are actually located near fields that use glyphosate, the glyphosate in those fields can get transferred to those fields through the wind, the soil, and water. Which basically means that most foods will at least have some traces of glyphosate. Now shockingly enough, if you drink water, eat things from the grocery store, or literally just breathe air, it's likely that you have glyphosate in your system. 
For example, this article says it is commonly found in food and water supplies, and also in soil and air samples. And U.S. scientists have even recorded weed killer and residues of rainfall. It then goes to say that exposure is basically ubiquitous and virtually unescapable. And get this, according to this recent 2022 report by the CDC, 80% of Americans have glyphosate in their urine. That means that if you're in the U.S. and you took a piss today, there's a very good chance that you pissed out weed killer. Out of 2,300 urine samples, 1,800 of them had glyphosate in them. And one third of the samples were from children 6 to 18 years old. Now, according to the University of San Diego, from 1993 to 2016, the amount of glyphosate in humans increased by 500%. Now, this may obviously be because the use of glyphosate has increased 15-fold since 1994, when Roundup first began to be used. Now, again, all of this could be because the U.S. government also allows six times more glyphosate in our food than Europe. Now, is this chemical actually dangerous? Well, according to this GMO advocate, it's not. So let's just hear what he has to say. I do not believe that glyphosate in Argentina is causing increases in cancer. You can drink a whole quart of it and it won't hurt you. It's, yeah, uh, it, you want to drink some? We have some here. I'd be happy to, actually. But you, not, not really, but... Not really? I know it wouldn't hurt I mean, me. If, if, if you say so, I have some glyphosate. No, no, I'm not stupid. Ah, okay, so you... you, you no, but I know... So that, it's dangerous, I right? Know, I know people try to commit suicide no, with no, it and but, fail no, let's, fairly let's, regularly. Tell the truth. It's, it's not dangerous, dangerous to humans. No, it's no. not. So are you ready to drink one glass of no, glyphosate? No, I'm not an idiot. Bruh. Okay, but in all seriousness, despite that obviously contradicting claim, what are the health risks of glyphosate? So on number one, we have cancer, which basically was the one that started the whole conspiracy, and we'll get into that soon. For example, in this scientific study from 2019, it says that people with high exposures to the popular herbicide have a 41 increased risk of developing a type of cancer called non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And number two, it's actually been shown to impact your reproductive system or your fertility. Also, kidney diseases. For example, in this 2015 study, it says that simultaneous exposure to heavy metals and glyphosate could have actually contributed to a form of kidney disease in Sri Lanka. Also, liver disease. For example, in this 2017 study, it found that feeding animals ultra-low doses of glyphosate led to liver disorders. And probably one of the craziest ones is that glyphosate can actually very negatively affect your gut health. Now, as you may have heard, the gut is literally called your second brain. This is because the gut literally has more than 100 million neurons, which are very similar to the ones found inside your brain. These gut neurons also communicate back and forth with the neurons inside your brain. Now the bad thing about this is that if there is something wrong with your gut, it sends direct stress signals to the brain, which can cause things like anxiety, depression, and stress. And vice versa, if you're having mental problems, you can actually cause physical problems inside your gut, with things like nausea, diarrhea, heartburn, and cramps. Which you may be thinking right now, that's probably why when you're really nervous, you kind of sometimes start feeling nauseous, because the, it's literally your mind affecting the nausea inside your gut. Now, shockingly, a 2018 study found that high levels of glyphosate given to mice actually affected their gut microbe, which led to anxiety and depressive behaviors. And a 2020 study found that, quote, glyphosate exposure may also have consequences for mental health, including anxiety and depression, through alterations in the gut microbe. So obviously, glyphosate is very fucking bad for you. Well, duh. Now you may be thinking exactly how much glyphosate is actually bad for you and how much of it is actually found inside our food. Well, according to this study, it says that harm to human health could begin as low as 0.1 parts per billion of glyphosate. And while the current legal limit is 30 parts per billion, it was suggested that it should be 0.1 parts per billion, which actually was the legal limit back in 1993. That is, until the EPA changed it after a request by Monsanto which is again the company that owns Roundup whose active ingredient is glyphosate. Now the crazy thing is that most popular foods tested for glyphosate are between 289 parts per billion to as high as 1,125 parts per billion of glyphosate, which is literally thousands over the legal limit. In fact, this 2016 study found high doses of glyphosate in probably all of your favorite foods. From cereals like Cheerios, Corn Flakes, Frosted Flakes, Special K, 
even the very healthy one, at least the one that I thought was healthy, called Kaishi or Kashi, I think. Literally brands that are sponsored as healthy, but actually obviously are not. In fact, Cheerios that are actually sponsored as things that can help with heartburn and are actually very healthy for you are the ones that have the highest amount of glyphosate and literally everything that this test found. And as you can see here, these Cheerios are non-GMO. But again, because it is made from oats, they're gonna have a very high level of glyphosate. The study also found glyphosate in a lot of chips, from Lay's to Doritos to Fritos. This Stacy's Pita Chips, which are also sponsored to be healthy and are said to be non-GMO, also contain wheat and oats, which basically means they have an incredibly high amount of glyphosate. And there's also glyphosate in a lot of other snacks from goldfish to Cheez-Its to Oreos to Ritz cookies. Okay, now, does glyphosate actually cause cancer? Well, this is pretty much the entire conspiracy and indeed where I went down the whole fucking rabbit hole trying to figure out if it actually does or not. So I just hope you enjoy this information. If you don't, just skip it. Okay, so today in present day, some agencies claim that it does cause cancer while others claim that it does not. So obviously, there's controversy and there's contradictions between literally everyone on this. Now, the controversy began when 46-year-old Dwayne Johnson developed a fatal form of cancer known as non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. He did this while he was working as a school groundskeeper spraying large quantities of Roundup. Again, the weed killer made by Monsanto. He then sued Monsanto for causing him cancer and thousands of people also followed him. Now, basically, this whole court case developed into a giant rabbit hole and conspiracy to expose the secrets of Monsanto and their efforts to try to hide the toxicity of their precious chemical glyphosate. Now, the battle took off in 2015 when the International Agency for Research on Cancer classified glyphosate as a probable human carcinogen, which basically means it probably does cause cancer. Now, the thing is that U.S. agencies like the EPA or U.S. Environmental Protection Agency still said that glyphosate is unlikely to cause cancer. In fact, right now, when you type in on Google whether glyphosate causes cancer or not, it will tell you that it doesn't and only show you the study by the EPA, which again, pretty fucking sketchy. But this is where it gets interesting. In 2016, when a scientific panel reviewed the EPA study, they concluded that the EPA had errors in how they evaluated their research. And in 2015, the EPA's own Office of Research and Development went against the EPA's Office of Pesticide Programs. The EPA's Office of Research and Development even said that the evidence actually supported the opposite conclusion, that glyphosate does cause cancer. Which is kind of crazy because there's people in the same organization contradicting each other. Now, the conspiracy grew even more when the court documents, including Monsanto's company email, show that Monsanto actually influenced this decision. The documents revealed that since the International Agency of Cancer Research said that glyphosate was a probable human carcinogen, Monsanto actually made an attack plan that would defend the safety of the chemical, actually trying to push glyphosate as both non-carcinogenic and risk-free. Since then, Monsanto has not only been a ghostwriter for scientific papers claiming that glyphosate is safe, but actually removed scientists involved in research trying to prove the threat of glyphosate, including Dr. Peter Infante, who was going to be part of the EPA study but was actually removed, most likely because he was known to have actually identified other chemicals as carcinogenic. And now we know that CropLife International, a chemical industry that represents Monsanto among other chemical companies, not only told the EPA to remove Dr. Peter Infante, but previously told them to actually cancel the investigation altogether. This gets even crazier when you realize that in 2016, the United Nations and World Health Organization panel also held a meeting which ended on the conclusion that glyphosate was probably not a cancer risk to humans. And here again, it was discovered that the chairman of the meeting actually owns an institution that receives money from Monsanto. In 2012, this institution took more than $1 million in donations from guess who? CropLife International, the same company tied to Monsanto that also influenced the EPA's decision. This is even more of a conspiracy when you realize that the conclusion in the meeting was made two days before the European Union was going to decide whether glyphosate was safe or not. This is of course pretty convenient for the chemical industry because if the European Union had decided that glyphosate was a risk, the chemical companies would have lost billions of dollars. 
Now, this controversy also took place in Europe. This happened when the European Food Safety Authority and the European Chemicals Agency claimed that glyphosate had no health risks. But again, here there is evidence that the conclusion was directly influenced by the chemical industry. Here, it was found that the approval of glyphosate by the European Union was based on studies plagiarized from Monsanto. Again, the company that owns Roundup whose chemical active ingredient is glyphosate. As this article by The Guardian says, 50% of the material evaluating the health risk of glyphosate, including entire pages, was plagiarized from Monsanto studies. And despite all of this, in a 2021 report, the European Union concluded that glyphosate was safe and does not cause cancer. Which, guess what, also was a conclusion based on studies submitted by the Glyphosate Renewal Group, which is a collection of companies that also includes Monsanto. You can't be serious, man. You cannot be serious! Okay, enough of the bad news. I think you basically understood the gist of the whole story and the whole conspiracy. It's basically just chemical companies trying to influence the decisions of other people, whether it be in the government or other agencies. Okay, so I think I basically went over everything with glyphosate. And don't worry, I'm going to tell you about the solution at the end. So I'm not just going to leave you with all the bad shit. So just wait for that. But first, we're going to talk about something else, which I talked about already in another video, but doesn't hurt to mention it. And this thing is fluoride. Now, as I said in my other video, if you live in the US, it's very likely that you have fluoride in your tap water. And again, fluoride is a nasty chemical that is put there allegedly to calcify your teeth and to help with cavities. But as a consequence, it has also been shown to calcify the pineal gland. And the pineal gland is a gland in the center of the brain that's actually incredibly important for your mood and mental health. This is because it actually secretes melatonin and serotonin. And the pineal gland basically works in this way. When you wake up in the morning and light hits your eyes, the pineal gland starts secreting or producing serotonin. But when you go to sleep at night and there's basically no light at all, the pineal gland starts secreting melatonin. Serotonin is basically known as the feel-good chemical. As this article mentions, when serotonin is at normal levels, you feel focused, emotionally stable, happier, and calmer. But when it's at low levels, it's associated with depression. So basically, serotonin just stabilizes your mood and keeps you energized throughout the day. And when there's no light out, the pineal gland starts secreting melatonin, which is known as the sleepy chemical, which obviously helps you sleep. Now, both of these things means that the pineal gland basically determines how you feel throughout the day and how you sleep at night, which means it's incredibly important for your overall health. So if you feel groggy, sad, or like shit, it probably is because your pineal gland is calcified which has been shown to make it not work properly. For example, in this 2014 study, it says that, quote, the regulations of the content of fluoride in food, drinking water, and personal products should be reviewed in order to reduce fluoride in the pineal gland, which directly affects mental health. And in this other article, it says that, quote, pineal gland calcification is suspected to be one of the main reasons for melatonin reduction. So if you have trouble sleeping and you drink a shit ton of tap water, that may be why. Okay, now moving on to heavy metals. Again, I'm gonna give you all the solutions to all this stuff, including glyphosate and fluoride and heavy metals too. So just be patient for that or skip to the end if you want, but I suggest trying to listen to all this. Now, just like glyphosate and fluoride, heavy metals can show up in places that you don't expect. As this FDA article says, a reality about our food supply is that metals such as arsenic, lead, cadmium, mercury, and others are present in certain foods. And here again, it says that heavy metals may in part cause fatigue, recurrent headaches, and autoimmune disease, among other things. Okay, but for this, don't worry too much because not all foods have heavy metals. In fact, a lot of them have a very low amount or none at all. The only reason I'm telling you this is because of my own experience, because I was basically a vegan for two years. And of course, then I did not consume any heavy metals because my diet did not consist of any heavy metals but when i actually switched to being a pescatarian i realized that a lot of the stuff i was eating did contain heavy metals such as tuna cans and other fish like salmon which can contain a moderate amount but I'll, again not too much okay now into probably what everyone has been waiting for the solutions okay number one for glyphosate what can you do so as I said, Roundup is directly sprayed over GMOs and other crops like wheat 
and oats. So the solution is to buy organic foods. And even though I said that they probably don't have 0% glyphosate, they still have very little amounts, which is a lot better than buying foods that are directly sprayed with glyphosate, which have very high amounts of it. And another thing you can do is buy foods at places like farmer's market, such as Whole Foods or Sprouts, which are a lot more healthy and more organic. Now for fluoride. So obviously, like I said in my other videos, the best things you can do is buy fluoride-free water filter, such as this one, fluoride-free toothpaste, such as this one, and also you can meditate or sun gaze, which I think actually helps decalcify the pineal gland. And for all these things, whether it be glyphosate, fluoride, or heavy metals, the absolute best thing you can do is actually detox your body. And by far the most powerful thing I've found that detoxes your body from all these things is natural mineral called zeolite. Now zeolites are just a natural mineral that's created when volcanic ash meets alkaline water. This creates a crystalline structure that has very unique properties. Now you may be asking, how is it actually helpful? Well, number one, it has a unique property which basically makes it act as a sponge or magnet for heavy metals and toxins. This includes things like pesticides and herbicides like glyphosate, chemicals like fluoride, all heavy metals, and even microplastics and radiation. Its unique property basically makes it attract all positively charged particles or ions, and as all toxins are positively charged, it attracts all of them. So it basically works like a magnet for toxins. And secondly, it's also very effective at something called cation exchange, which basically means that when it attracts negatively charged ions like heavy metals and toxins, it actually gives out positively charged ions like calcium. So it's exchanging toxins for nutritional things. Now this is why zeolite has actually been used to purify water from both heavy metals, glyphosate, and fluoride, as you can see from all these different studies. In fact, more than 2,000 years ago, the ancient Mayans even used zeolites to purify their own water from toxins. Even at Chernobyl and other nuclear sites, it was used to remove radiation from the soil and water. It is even widely used in zoos, veterinary clinics, and farms to actually remove harmful substances from the bodies of animals. And finally, after zeolites enter the body, they can actually leave within four to five hours, which means that because of its unique property of attracting or being a magnet for heavy metals and toxins, when it goes into your body, it basically just attracts all of them and it comes out of your body with all those things which is just crazy. Now all these things make zeolite kind of like a self-regulating detox mineral, which is essentially like your body's own immune system, but on steroids. And of course you guys know I got you with an offer for zeolites. So I was recently contacted by this brand called Touchstone Essentials, which sent me these, which are literally bottles with just distilled water and zeolite nanoparticles. You guys know I normally never do sponsorships and I pretty much have declined nearly every single one that someone has tried to propose to me because I'm just very picky with that type of stuff. And I know if it's not something that resonates with me and that I know it can help people, I'm not going to promote it. And I know that this can actually help a lot of people, which is why I decided to make a whole YouTube video about it. So I got you guys two discounts for both of these bottles. One is going to run only for 12 days and the other is going to be for all time. So the one that's gonna run for 12 days from the 1st to the 11th of September is for this bottle only, which you can literally just get for $5. Very, 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 very good offer. If you wanna try it, I suggest at least getting this. And the other offer is $50 off of the original $89 for both of these two bottles combined. All right, so for all you guys that are actually gonna to try to get the product, I just wanna show you real quick how to get it. This is for the $5 bottle. If you click the link, it'll show you this page. You basically just click the orange button up here and it'll show you this. And for both of them, you have to sign up basically for a monthly subscription, which you can cancel anytime afterwards if you don't like the product. And this is basically what you do. You do this, you click it, and then you have to create an account and put your information. And after that, you can just get the product. If you missed out on the $5 offer, I'm sorry, because I know that I said this is a limited offer only for 12 days. But after that, I think it will still be um, $13.
Okay, and this is for the detox pack. So when you click the link for the $39 offer for the two bottles, you'll see this. And it's basically the same thing as the other one. You basically have this where you sign up and you don't sign up with Google because it won't let you. It won't give you the discount. Just sign up putting this and you'll get the offer. Again, there's two bottles here. So this one's for a cellular detox. It's a spray. And this one's a liquid form for a gut and body detox. So again, the links for both discounts are below. I hope you enjoyed the video. I try to make it as informational as possible and also offer some solutions. Other than that, it's been Indigo Bruno. Stay alive, stay aware, and peace.